Over the past week, Rocket Lab reported their Q3 2023 earnings as well as had their CEO Peter Beck on an interview with NASA Spaceflight Live. In this video, let's talk about a few key takeaways and highlights. My name is Scott, let's talk Rocket Lab. To streamline this video and make it more easily digestible, what I've done is I've taken a few components out of the overall valuation model and simplified them into their own tab. If you are interested in seeing the overall valuation model, it has everything from acquisitions to headcount to number of electrons built, virtually anything that is quantifiable you're going to find on this spreadsheet, including expected share prices that go all the way out to 2030. So if that is something that interests you, the link is in the description below. So first things first, let's talk about the Electron. The Electron is expected to return to pad on November 28th to launch the fifth satellite for IQPS's Synthetic Aperture Radar constellation of a planned constellation of 36 satellites. This mission will be the first of two Electron launches within Q4, with the second being launched by either North Star, Astroscale, Hawkeye 360, Synspective, or Capella Space. Astroscale seems most likely, in my opinion, due to the odd guidance that was given for Q4 launch revenue. Typically within a quarter that has two launches, I would expect two launches to be at the price of $7.5 million each, which is typically Electron's average selling price. Guidance for Q4 is instead $16.5 million. So what I find odd about that is I'm not sure if one of the launches is at $7.5 and the other is at nine, or how exactly that's split, but that's why I think it's going to be Astro Scale. Typically when Rocket Lab receives a bulk order, there's a discount of give or take 20%. And with that, we have North Star, Hawkeye, Synspective, and Capella all being within a bulk order, and Astroscale being the odd man out. Either way, it's going to be interesting to see who the second customer for Q4 is and what the implications are for the unusual revenue guidance. Next, we got to look at 2024's launch schedule. From that, we can indirectly get a glimpse into how 2025's schedule is shaping up. It's worth noting that Q3 is a little light, and I'm not sure if that's intentional, if maybe they're expecting some of the launches to bump out of Q1 into Q2 and into Q3, or if maybe it's just like kind of a more naturally light quarter. Best case two is maybe we can squeeze one or maybe even two launches into there. Either way, I'm not too worried about it because we're going from 11 launches in 2023 to 22 launches in 2024. So we're still going to see a doubling of Electron launches, and this doesn't even include what could be a ninth launch in Q4, which would be the Neutron's Maiden launch. Another thing I noticed from this slide is the recovery plans. They actually seem light compared to what I was expecting. If you take the number of recoveries here, which is nine, and divide that by the total number of launches, 22, we're gonna land at 41%. If we were to look back on the last 10 launches, you'll see that there is one, two, three, four. So we're already at that 40% recovery cadence. And based on the guidance for 2024, it seems like we're kind of stagnating at that recovery rate, though I do think this is going to increase. And the reason that I say that is during Peter Beck's interview with NASA Spaceflight, he mentioned, don't be surprised if more reusable vehicles pop up throughout the year. I think that's definitely going to be the case. I'd be surprised if we are under 50% electron recovery rate by the end of 2024. I could be wrong, but I've got a good feeling that we're going to hit 50% or more in 2024. This would bode well for Electron cost to build as well because we're actually already on our fifth consecutive quarter of decreased cost to build. And I think that's only going to decrease over time with, with economy of scale and especially with recovery. Now on the point of recovery and reuse, the last reuse mission that we had was mission 41, We Love the Nightlife, which saw the reflight of a previously flown Rutherford engine. Reiterated in the Peter Beck interview with NASA Spaceflight was that the next reuse mission is expected to be all nine Rutherford engines, and then the next next reuse mission is expected to be the entire full booster. Looking at the 2024 roster, and more specifically the recovery missions, I think it's a safe bet to assume that we're going to see this in the first half of next year during one of these recovery missions. The reason that I say that it's going to be one of the recovery missions is they're obviously going to want to fish the rocket back out to see how it performed being a reused rocket. All right, now let's get into 2025's Electron schedule. If we were to take Q4's guidance of 16.5 million, and then the guidance for the launches that are expected in 2024, multiplying those by the average selling price of 7.5 million, which was stated on the call to kind of 
be a safe bet for the average for the electron launches throughout the year. So if we were to take the Q4 guidance, adding the 2024 guidance and subtracting that from what was the launch backlog as of September 30th, which would be this $250.7 million, we're going to land at $69.2 million. And now if we subtract that by 7.5, the average selling price for the Electron going forward, that lands us a rate around nine launches. So now we'll hop back over to the launch tracker. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave the IQPS mission in, as well as just one of the uh, 2023 missions, the one that's, we're not gonna keep the Astro scale in, we're just going to keep one. It, does, it doesn't really matter for this example. What we're going to do is we're going to just scroll down. Not sure if you'll be able to see, but in the bottom corner, I can see a little count. We're going to get rid of Varda 2. We're going to get rid of Mars. We're going to get rid of Venus. And we're going to get rid of Pathfinder and Varda 3. And we are at 23, so we'll get rid of that. So as of Black Sky number 3, we can see 22 launches for the time being. Um, what we're going to do now is look at the rest of the launches that we do know uh, going forward, the post-2024 launches in this case. I know that the dates are set to 2024, but um, if you've been following Rocket Lab or any launch company for that matter, you'll know that delays are going to happen. So going past 2024, we're just going to highlight the rest of these. We're going to remove the MDA Global Star Satellite and VARDA-4, and that lands us, again, I'm not sure if you can see it, but that lands us at that number nine that we saw a moment ago. So it seems like of the launches that Rocket Lab has on their backlog, they've all been announced and um, are, well, being tracked. Finally, let's look into space systems. This was something that was um, not enough to call a red flag, but something worth, um, worth monitoring, I guess, going forward. If you were to simply take the June 30th space systems backlog, so that's the end of Q2, and you were to subtract the space systems revenue that was recognized in Q3, you're going to land at 326 million. Now, as of September 30th, we know that the space systems backlog is 331.7 million. There's only a difference of about 5.5 million for space systems backlog. So not a lot of growth between last check-in and this one, which is the Q3, but all in all, it's nothing that I'm too worried about. So starting in Q1 of 2024, Rocket Lab is expected to start the delivery of their MDA Global Star satellites, of which they're making 17. Now, I don't want to rely on wishful thinking too much, but Telesat did announce a contract with MDA as a prime satellite manufacturer for their Telesat Low Earth Orbit Constellation. So assuming that Rocket Lab and MDA have had a healthy working relationship throughout the building of these initial 17 satellites for Global Star, it's safe to assume that Rocket Lab is at least being considered for the Telesat contract that was announced back in August. The contract that was announced was for 198 satellites. So whether it's Rocket Lab even just providing reaction wheels or only the solar, they're still going to be very healthy for space systems overall. All in all though, Rocket Lab has never been a company that I've felt the need to cross my fingers for when it comes to execution. This earnings, while it wasn't a blow up by any means, it was a good justification that Rocket Lab is going to continue to execute and continue to deliver on what they say they're going to. But I'll turn it to you guys. What did you think of the earnings? Is there anything that I left out here? Is there anything that you were hoping to hear but didn't? If you got value from this video, please like and subscribe. If you're interested in this spreadsheet, the link is in the description below. Thank you guys for the hangout, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.